don't judge me for my jacket. I uh, I am a skeleton. I freeze when it's just like slightly even cold. And this is this is my girlfriend's jacket. It's quite comfortable. All right, today we're gonna talk about. Oh shit! I just realized my camera's crap. Oh, that's no point, huh? Have you ever had a had a game that you were like, I had? I don't think I need it anymore. So you just, you take it over to GameStop and, and you tell the clerk, hey, I'm gonna trade this in. And it, it does not at all amount to what you paid for initially. That, that's me. I, I was that kid uh, several times. I traded in tons of games from my uh, personal collection just because I needed a, a good old quick buck to buy the next, uh, the next Call of Duty, if you will. As you can imagine, being a kid without a sustainable income, you know, is, is kind of hard. Especially when all your friends, you know, that live in upper middle class families, um, get the new Xbox for Christmas, and and they they just they just have Call of Duty Black Ops 2 ready to go. You know, I, I didn't have that. In fact, I got my Call of Duty for free from a friend. And, and whenever I wanted to get another game, I had to trade stuff in to get said games. And boy, boy was I fucking stupid. <laughs> Needless to say, I've traded in many, many games and consoles, and I'm here to tell you guys, if you're trying to collect, do not trade in your games at all. It is not worth it. GameStop will not give you back the money that you think it's worth, and most other places probably won't either. And that is just the sad truth. The best bet is either selling it to somebody for what the price is supposed to be, or you don't sell it at all and just grow your collection, which is what I recommend doing anyway. So let me give you a little story, a little, little background as to um, why I think this video is so uh, important to make for aspiring collectors like myself. Once uh, once upon a time, a wee little, wee little Dislo, uh, about the age of uh, 13 years old, had this uh, limited edition Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker camouflage PSP. With that PSP came many, many nostalgic memories uh, with, you know, the beautiful PSP UMDs, getting to play Crisis Core Final Fantasy for the first time, you know, those kind of things. 13 years old, you know, I needed some cash. I wanted to, to, to get something. I don't even remember what it was. That's how not important it is to trade in your stuff. And so I took it to GameStop to trade it in. And I, I should have taken this as a sign because the manager at GameStop even said, Hey bro, are you sure you want to trade in this limited edition console that you're probably not ever gonna see again. Me being 13, I was just like, absolutely, you know, I, I, I don't care. Give me that good old sweet trading credit. Do you know how much I got for that? Do you know how much I got for a limited edition camouflage PSP? $40! I got $40 for something that I have been yearning to fill back a void in my collection. Something that I have been waiting to get for so long because I foolishly got rid of it at 13. Now, I I'm not a big fan of the color camouflage. I don't even know if it's really a color, more of a pattern, but the point is, I got rid of this. And and it, it, it pops up for, for sale on eBay occasionally, which, you know, it's not a bad thing if, you know, I didn't have any bills to pay so I could buy it again. But uh, I, I do, because I'm an adult. And adults have to, buy, have to pay bills, and it's just the, the sad truth. Now, this, this PSP came with a really nice carrying pouch, you know. It came with Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker itself, and it came with a, a four gigabyte uh, uh, memory stick, which at the time well, was baller badass. You, you didn't find four gigabyte memory sticks for cheap like that because you had to buy them, and, and for some reason, Sony thought it'd be a, a brilliant idea to have a proprietary memory card for the PSP, which I still to this day think is a fucking stupid idea. But I digress, you know. Trading it in, there's nothing I can do about it now. It's long gone. It's been gone for almost 10 years now. And and I regret it every single day that I turn around and look at this beautiful bookshelf of stuff that I have over here that I don't even play. With that being said, that was definitely the most memorable trade and experience I've had so far. But that's not the only thing I got rid of. And I'm not here to just tell you GameStop bad. No, not at all. I'm also here to mention that trading it to other people, you know, third parties, is also a bad idea if the thing that you want isn't even available in your region. Yes, I'm talking about uh, the Nintendo Switch when it first launched. I had this guy that I knew, uh, I'm not going to give any real names, I'm just going to call him Joe, and and, and he wanted a, a, a Wii U. He was in the market for a, a, a good old Wii U. And I 
you know, being a collector at the time. I think I was about 18 whenever this was going on. I had a job, uh, not a good job. You know, I worked at a, at a fast food restaurant running, running food uh, until three in the morning. I thought to myself, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. I'll go ahead and um, I'll, I'll sell this guy my limited edition Zelda Wind Waker Wii U, which again, I still regret selling. And the reason I, I traded it to him was because I wanted to get the Nintendo Switch, which was releasing that year. It had released, I, I think, not a couple weeks after I sold this Wii U. And I was saving up money to to buy said Switch. And then everyone bought all the Switches. So so I was left with about 150 bucks from this uh, from this Wii U deal that I did, solely for the purpose of buying a Switch. And I, I waited for, for weeks, for a good long while. Until I, I just spent the money on something that I don't even remember that I spent it on. Needless to say, I did not get a Switch for quite a while after that because they weren't available anywhere. What I should have done was save that cash or, you know, not traded the Wii U at all. Because that Wii U, while yes, it's not super expensive, it had cool stuff. It came with a copy of, of the Hyrule Historia digitally for free, which I thought saved me 35 bucks because I didn't want to buy the actual book because, again, I don't have money to spend. Uh, along with that, wind, that, that, that console went the uh, digital copy of Wind Waker that came with it as well, one of my favorite Zelda games. And because I sold this Wii U, I missed out on not only that, but Twilight Princess HD and a few other Wii U games like... Um, we fit you, but again, I sold it, there's nothing I can do about it at this point. And I ended up having to wait eight months to get a Switch through Walmart's layaway program, which I ended up paying the full amount out of pocket, you know, not with the Wii U money because, again, I spent it on who knows what. So, I talked to the guy again later, about about a month later, about the, uh, the Wii U that I sold him. Turns out he sold it to his buddy because he thought he didn't need it anymore because it, it, he wasn't playing it. So my chances of getting that Wii U back are astronomically gone at this point. And it, it, it kind of hurt a little bit. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, it wasn't mine anymore, so I can't really be that upset. But, you know, you live and you learn. Don't trade in your games at GameStop if you're trying to be a, a, a collector. Uh, it took me quite a long time to replenish what I had sold off. Uh, to GameStop and, and various other people because I just wanted something else that absolutely wasn't worth the price, especially if it was something like Call of Duty because the price of those games has dropped astronomically. Now, if we're talking NCAA 14, you know, I, I, maybe I should have held on to that one a little bit because those games are quite, quite worth something now. But everything you see back here, I have bought pretty much with my own money. And a lot of stuff that comes with collecting, you know, you can end up getting for free if you just wait or ask, you know, friends or, or family who have old stuff that they don't want anymore. It's really easy. In fact, here, I can show you some stuff that I got for free. I got a lot of stuff for free. I got all of these Game Boys for free. I got this PSP for free. You know, I just asked my girlfriend's family, yo, you got any stuff that you don't want anymore? PSP. So I got a PSP back. It's not the one that I want, and this one also um, has a, a jank ass battery cover on the back of it. Like, look, look at this shit. Look at it. it just it just falls. What the fuck is this shit? It just falls out. But I got one. I got one for free. That's all that matters. And I even got my mat. One of my holy grails in collecting, Conker's Bad Fur Day, for free. This was from my brother, you know, he, he grew up in, in the 90s, so he got, you know, box copies of N64 games and Super Nintendo games and all this other stuff, you know, all the time. And this is one of the few survivors that he had, and this is one of my favorite games of all time. This, you know, it came with everything. It has the manual, you know, which phenomenal. You know, it has that good old Nintendo uh, call number on the back of it. An excellent condition cart. I mean, come on, what, what, what more can you ask for? And the box. This, this is actually worth a good little bit of money now, too. And I'm glad I still have it. I don't want to bend it. I don't want to bend it. I don't want to bend it at all. So yeah, moral of the story is, don't get rid of your stuff. If you're trying to be a collector, just hold on to it. It is it is not worth getting rid of. I promise you it's not. Because I, there are so many things I regret getting rid of as a kid. And as, as being a kid, you know, you, you think it's a good idea at the time. I guarantee you, most decisions that you make as a child are not the right decisions most of the time. 
but yeah that's it for this video i thought i would just you know share a little bit of a of my two cents as a collector i don't have much in terms of collecting compared to other people you know this is this is pretty much all i got but you know i'm still proud of it i built this up by, by my lonesome and, and that's all i can ask for you know i'm proud of it. anyways if you guys like this video you know leave a like comment share whatever i i do whatever i don't care as long as i get that support it means a lot to me i hope this helps out any aspiring collectors as to uh, whether or not you should get rid of that thing or not because you probably shouldn't follow me on instagram at dislo underscore music uh twitter i believe is the same thing anyway uh have a wonderful day guys uh, i'll talk to you guys in a little bit and peace out